and on the greens, as usual in a major, so often comes down to putting, making From those Norway, clutch putts at the Victor right time. Hovlin. Look at that start for Xander. He is so tough in these big competitions. About 17 yards. And that's out to the right, trying to draw back to the hole. Good shot from Shoffley there. This hole so interesting. There's actually a tee box, and they can play this as a par four. Shoffley tied for 14th last year. Playing in his seventh U.S. Open. To an easy hole location today on that front left. Especially in the fairway, 139. He's uphill about five yards. That's pretty good. We've seen quite a few balls come up short. That was ideal. John Rahm has been consistent. He has been so far. He's had three great opportunities. He made the one at the tenth. Let's see if he can make this one. What a start. Yeah, he's got some speed coming down that hill, surprisingly so. Yeah, such a hard fairway to hit. You've got to keep it up the left side of the fairway. Anything gets in the middle to the right goes down in the deep stuff. That's up the left side. He needs to keep cutting. Right two, please. I heard him say please. Oh, the golf ball listened. Ask nicely, and yeah. you shall receive. Here's Xander Shoffley at 13. He got a very good kick to get back to here, 206. And he's on a good line, trying to cut back to the hole. Okay, just a steady player, Xander. And that's what does so well in a U.S. Open. I think that's the key. This golf course requires you to use your brain and thought process on every shot. He's at it on the proper side of the hole, all these four holes he's started on. Two sixty-seven front, two ninety-four. No, they could get there or not, but he had a beautiful drive. It's hard to get this ball on the green. You got to fit it up a very narrow side on the left. Oh, he carries it all oh, good the way that. there. Wow. Well, if you you expect this guy to be in the mix, he's so good on these difficult golf courses. That's not bad. Now, Shoffley from in this little low area up the hill for Eagle and he, the lead. He told me it's all he had to get it to here. He had a wonderful shot. Just, just be aware of the speed that gets going after it gets to the hole. Ooh, that was an <laughs> awkward putt up the hill there. Shot out to the right. I don't often say that. Yeah. But he does. Well, this guy's got a major type game, Jimmy. Seventh start in the U.S. Open. He's never missed the cut. Xander Shoffley, one of the hottest men on the golf course. He sure is, just a sandwich here. Got to carry it all the way there. There is a slope to the left. It's, that is left of the, way left of the hole. Way long. Pull it a little bit. The tendency is they shut the face down. It's going to go further than you think. He's going to get away with that one, though. Good play, good scores early on. Marine layer is in. Xander Shoffley, this for birdie at 15 and sole possession of the lead. One of those names that many people picked this week here, first time ever. Xander Shoffley set now at six. He has driven the ball. He's at every fairway, so I guess you would say superb. And that's going up the right side, trying to draw a little bit. There you go, find the fairway here. Finally, yeah, he sure has. He's playing some solid golf. 210 plays downhill about a club. He's trying to draw back there. If he might need to get up a little. Front of the screen pitches away when you carry that bunker, but a solid shot there for Shoffley right in the middle of the green. When you look at the hole locations for the entire golf course, this has to be one of the most difficult, one of the longest par fours, the longest par oh. four today. Pin nestled on that top left, front left corner. Everything sloping away from it. Par here is a great score. Second hardest hole in the course so far today. Oh, 
those throughout the week, how important they are at a U.S. Open. And here's a look at the tee shot, Xander Shoffley. Yeah, this is straightaway par four, tough hole. Got to get it in the fairway, obviously. Just visually, that drive, not easy, right? Oh, it's terrifying. You've got the branca down the right, thick rough down the left. If you miss this fairway, you're losing over half a shot. And if you miss this fairway, so huge pressure when you stand there with the driver in hand. Nicely done, though, for Zandi. You see a little hover. I like that with players. When you see them hover, it just makes everything poised, ready for movement. And lovely and wide, because he's not a big guy, but he still obviously generates big speed. The wider the arc, the faster the outside of that circle will move. And as always, with any top player, the transition is key. Beautiful move into the left side. Straightened up, posted on that left leg through strike. So reliable. Uh, one of the great ball strikers you have to be. All right, meanwhile, Shoffley in the fairway. Yeah, 186, I think he's going to go more right of this flag, and that's what he's done because everything's short, kicks it back, so this should be a pretty good spot right here. Yeah. Like stealing a three on this hole. 30 players now through approach shots into the 17th. He's just the third one of them. He's not missed a fairway, so he's driven the ball really well. It's been the easiest fairway to hit, too, Jim. 57 yards wide. 88% of the field has hit this fairway. He's leaning anxiously. Yeah, it's heading up that right. Depends on the bounce. Yeah, it looks like it'll stay, and that's actually a nice place to come in from. That whole location on the left side from face on before, and Nick talked about the width that he has. He doesn't have a huge amount of wrist set either. That club gets to the top, and it's laid off or a little bit to the left, and then it kicks back there. See the unwinding in the hips, the late hit. Looking right up the flagstick, like Brad said, it's a great angle coming in. Hit that 319 yards off the tee. Anxious, it's a little right. And a little short. Yeah, well, left to right wind, trying to avoid the bunkers at all costs. And that's going down that left side. So much strength, so much grip through the left hand here to hold this down the middle. Yeah, and he went with a lot more loft so he could get a little bit more club face on it. Well played. So laying back for that third here at the first to par five at LACC. And from 157, he's going to be more aggressive with his line. There's no feeding in from the front edge from that distance. Well, he's done a great job. It'll feed down towards the back edge a little, but birdie putt from where he was off the tee. Captain Justice. Second on the way. A little right. Just a little. What kind of iron shots have you just seen? Okay. To within one. Back to back birdies. Push that a ride, away. didn't he? Yeah. What a cool looking hole, though. I know we got some long ones, Jim, but I think this is going to be one of the toughest ones to hit in regulation. Oh, well, that's going left, Brad. That is not a very good shot. That's one of the worst shots he's hit all day. However, he's putting for birdie. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Not a long one. Not a chance, really, but hole high. Shoffley, a lengthy birdie try at four. Yeah, about as long a putt as you can have. It ought to swing a little to this right. That's got to go. Yeah, that was nearly 60 feet of putt. A little tester there. Similar length putt as the last one, but he goes up the slope. Oh, Zander. 
that was screaming three putts and he steals one out of it. Three birdies in five holes and he's within one. It looked like it was pretty sandy underneath just if he can get it straight up in the air. Wow, that was almost great. Yeah, it's something like that. Just a pop. Shaft was forward the whole time. Club that never left the grass. Yep, he escapes with four here. You do need good breaks, don't you think? That's a nice one for where he could have finished in the Branca for Chauflé. Then you got Fowler up in front. Another good break uh, to have a shot of some sort. Shoffley on the tee here at seven. on Ricky Fowler what he's doing I mean this man's right there he's got a chance to get it to seven under yeah I mean again just like Ricky Fowler his statistics have been brilliant right through the back today oh, yeah. Yeah. fairway slopes big time left to right yeah if you get it up there high enough down that left side it can come off and there's a bit of fire in these fairways and get into the rough. And that right side is the firmest side. It carries plenty out there. Yeah, and the wind that comes up this afternoon, it'll help the players shape this tee shot just a little bit into that hill so you won't have to worry about it getting. This the par five in his second, the eighth. And almost. Well, there you see a little bit of fires out earlier in the week. This is third. Sense of just how fast these greens are. And put it like that. So he matches Fowler at eight under. Was trying to hit a good shot in there, but uh, you got to hold it. You know, pretty pretty strong to hold that wind. This looks pretty good. All right, we'll have a look. No, got to go. Got to go. So that left for the 62. Ricky Fowler's made history. Xander Shoffley has matched him. Not one, but a couple of 62s in the opening round here at Los Angeles Country Club. The two lowest rounds ever at a U.S. Open. All right, a U.S. Open record tying 62 for Xander Shoffley. First, Ricky, then you. How would you describe the rhythm of this special day? Yeah, pretty good flow uh, throughout the round. I was looking at Ricky uh, up on the board all day, so... Every time I made, a, I made a birdie, it just said I was still in second place. So I just uh, felt like if he was doing it, why can't I? Take a look at some highlights. You were bogey free on the day, starting with the 10th hole here. Uh, yeah, just kind of honestly hit a, a wedge a little skinny. Um, I was trying to pitch it at the hole, and I flew like six pass. So just a nice way to start a tournament. Perfect way to start it. You made a turn in 32, and you kept it going. Take a look at your second now on the par four second. Well, I, uh, John hit a, a laser in there, and then Javi holed out right before me. So, uh, once again, uh, they both made me believers that uh, this pin is accessible, and I had a pretty good number coming in. So, I was fortunate to hit that just below the hole. Par force here, very difficult. How about the birdie at five? Yeah, this is uh, one of those, you know, in order to shoot 62 out of the U.S. Open or, you know, any golf course, you got to do just kind of stupid stuff like that. So, um, <laughs> I wasn't a lot rough off the tee, out of position, just hacked it up there, and was lucky to make that. Par three is also getting a lot of attention this week. Here you are at seven. Yeah, uh, Austin talked me into a four iron. Um, I just hit a four iron pretty much as hard and as right to left as I can. And uh, obviously got a really good bounce, as you can see right here. Kind of pitched up and left and kind of curled towards the hole. So happy I was able to capitalize on that putt. Now how aware were you that history was potentially in play as you played these final couple of holes? Um, it's not really what's on your mind. You're just trying to position yourself uh, for the event. And um, yeah, you know, I obviously wanted to give that putt on the last more of a look, but being above the hole out here on property is just not something you can do um, if you're trying to be aggressive. So I'm um, happy to just two putt coming in. 
in the par putt for 62. Five top tens and six U.S. Open starts. What is it about this championship that always seems to fit your game so well? Uh, just you need a little bit more patience. Um, Got to think your way around the property, and uh, tough golf is fun. Congratulations. Keep it going. Thanks.